Hi everybody, it's just me LTM. I am trying something different today, something that I haven't done before, so I am absolutely not going to call it a tutorial because I am learning how to do this myself for the first time. I have a project, hang on a minute, I have a project that I kind of wasn't really going to be a project, it was just testing yarn, it's the velvet yarn that I tested, you may have seen the video that I did, I will put a link to it up here in the corner. So this is some velvet yarn that I was testing in my machine and because there isn't much yarn in the ball, I decided to just keep going and actually make a beanie out of it. But I took it off the machine, just like this, so it's just that big, which is fine and makes quite a nice size for a slouchy beanie. This feels beautifully soft because the yarn is a velvety. However, I also have black velvet yarn which when I had when I was purchasing it I thought I would make a reversible beanie and have the black velvet yarn on the inside but I've already taken this off my machine as you can see it's off the machine and then I thought hmm I actually still want to make it reversible and do the other side black now I could of course just make a black one and then attach them later but I thought it would be nicer I was going to say easier but maybe it's not easier to attach this back onto my machine and then continue with the black yarn so that's what I'm going to try and do today is put a project that I've taken off the needles back onto the needles let's see how that goes will I succeed fingers crossed I hope so and you can see what I've already done is this yellow scrap yarn I have threaded through all of the live stitches. So I've gone through and picked up all the live stitches and put them onto this yellow yarn so that I know where the stitches are so that I can then locate them to try and put them back onto the machine. I did count as I was picking them up and there are definitely 48 stitches so that should mean that I've actually collected all of the stitches that I'm not going to have a drop stitch. So the next step is to try and put it on the machine. Note I'm going to make sure that the, the project is the right way out so the knit side on the outside and the purl side on the inside so it's actually going to go on the machine like that and that way when I continue on it should look right. Here we go. So here's my machine, this is the same machine that the project was made onto and here is the project and so what I need to do is get these stitches back onto all of these hooks. Now I don't, I'm not 100% sure where the start is, mm, this is probably the start because there's yarn coming out but that is the yarn that I've picked up all the stitches on so is it really the beginning? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't know. I don't know. I've never done this. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. But basically, each of the stitches that I have picked up on this yellow scrap yarn, I'm going to try and put over a hook on the machine. I'll zoom in so you can see a bit closer what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I've zoomed in and this is where that uh, yarn is coming out so it's this stitch right here this is the first stitch that I'm going to try and put on and I'm going to put it on the white needle which is the first needle now I don't know I will try and do it here of course you need to do this in a spot where the needle is up so that's always going to be where the yarn holder is so let's see how we go side on the inside. I'm a bit paranoid about what I'm doing here but let's see. Okay. One stitch on I guess. Continue round. Here's the next stitch. Now am I putting on these the right way? Am I putting them on pearl wise or knit wise? I, I really don't know. Um, and it's only going to be one row that looks a bit off if I've done it the wrong way. So 
I'm not going to um, I've just realized I've done this wrong because I'm not sure if you can see but what I actually need is I'm not sure whether I need the stitches to be over the pegs which they're not or just over the hooks nothing ventured nothing gained uh, let's keep going and see what happens Starting to think that this is reasonably easy now. I mean, it's not simple. It's quite tedious, really. Um, but I'm thinking as I get closer to the end, it's going to be more difficult because I'm going to have less room. You know, I won't have all of this space here to work in um, because there'll be um, knitting on the machine there. So I'm not sure what's going to happen as I get close to the end. I may or may not be able to do it. I'm not really sure. Like I said, there's time. So I'm learning how to do this as I go kind of thing. And I'm still not sure whether I'm putting the stitches on the right way or not. I'm kind of feeling like I may be putting some of them on backwards so that they'll be purl-wise instead of knit-wise. But... So be it. It's only going to be one row that will be impacted, so I'm not overly concerned about that. I must say picking up stitches is a bit tricky. Uh, sometimes I have to hold the waist yarn and pull the project so that the stitch becomes more visible and then I can actually pick it up so that I could put it on the needle. Trying to be careful that the waist yarn isn't getting caught up in the needles so that when I need to, I'm actually going to be able to undo it. So holding the waist yarn, pulling the project and the stitch kind of pops out a little bit more and it makes it easier to find and get my needle through so that I can then hook it over onto the needle just pulling the waist yarn out of the way so I'm not even halfway yet but that's all right now already I'll just zoom out a little bit you can see I've done about half now and already this is starting to get very tight so I'm not really sure what I need to do about that um, I can potentially undo this yarn this is the end yarn that I think I had pulled through the stitches and then was going to cinch it closed uh, but I have got the waist yarn this bright yellow yarn nice contrasting color so it's easy to see I've got this yellow yarn in here that is holding my live stitches as well so um, I so here I am I have gotten very close to the end I've got one two three more stitches to get on and I'm finished uh, it has started to get quite tricky to find the stitches because the uh, the knitting is now quite tight around the around the edges like here you can see it's quite stretched so it's gotten quite tight and therefore um, it's getting harder to actually find the stitches uh, so I'm having to kind of 
I've had to pull out some of this um, waste yarn so that I've got some to play with. So I've got one, two, three needles, so three more stitches to find. Hopefully I haven't missed any, but you can see I've got hardly any room to move here. So this is getting really quite tricky. Um, I'll see how I go. So here I am with my last stitch. Let me see if I can get that over onto that needle. Needing a little bit of manhandling because the bit underneath it, not missed. So it's the light blue to just get over there. Yay! Phew! Okay. So, I'm relieved. <laughs> Let me zoom out. And you can see that the whole project is back on the machine. So, I'm now going to remove this yellow waste yarn just by pulling it out. I'm quite confident all of the stitches are seeing what's happening. See this purple fluffy stuff sitting on top of the, has come out of the velvet fabric. So the velvet, sorry, the purple velvet yarn. Okay, that's all of my waste yarn out. So now I'm just going to try and get it set up a little bit better so that I can start trying to knit again and here is my number one needle so I'm just going to turn this all around go and get the black yarn and fingers crossed we can keep going with this project alrighty I am back again projects on here. I have my black yarn. You may have noticed that I posted a video recently that I borrowed a friend's yarn winder and decided to rewind all the balls of yarn that I have. So yarn that comes in a ball like this I have rewound into centre pool cakes. It was a really good idea because particularly with this black velvet one I found not one knot but Two knots in this yarn so if I hadn't have known about those they would cause quite a problem if I was trying to use the machine and I hadn't noticed I've had that happen before that here in the tension arm not sure if you can see it but it's down the side of the machine here uh, a knot got stuck I didn't realize that's what was wrong and I was look trying to look to see what was wrong with the needles here and still trying to make the project work but it was actually a knot stuck here in the yarn tensioner that was causing the problems so I have rewound all of my yarn into center pull cakes so that they will run nice and easily through the machine here's the black that I'm going to use so I'll just move up to needle number one the white needle being number one needle on the centro machine now because this is the velvety yarn, I'm definitely not going to run it through the tensioner because it will probably pull off half of the velvet as it runs through the machine. So I'm going to attach it like I would as if I was changing colours. Now you'll notice that there is this uh, length over here. This is the original end which I had run through to pick up the live stitches to then ostensibly cinch it close to make another end of a beanie. Um, I started trying to unravel this back to the beginning however it started shredding the yarn which is what happens with velvet yarn leaving just the cotton behind so I stopped trying to do that 
So in theory, when you do a color change, you would have two ends at exactly the same point. That's not going to be the case for me. So I will just um, pop this yarn in and we will see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen. Is this going to work? Is this not going to work? I really don't know. I'm going to reset my counter to zero, although I'm just going to use all of the black yarn because I used all of the purple yarn. I did take notice of the number of rows. I'm pretty sure it was 68 and I would normally have done about 60 for a beanie anyway so there was only eight more rows left of the yarn. So here we go. Fingers crossed this works. Just going to go slowly. Fingers crossed everybody. So I'm just going very slowly and I'm, what I'm watching for is to make sure that there is yarn over these two pegs and there is. So looks like mm, one is off here so I'm just going to go very carefully on the first round and make sure that I have stitches on all of the pegs. And there's a couple here that I don't, so I'm just grabbing those stitches, popping them on. Is this the right thing to do? I don't know. I haven't done this before, so I just, I really don't know. This is make it up as you go along. Yarn's going fairly smoothly. The yarn's coming out quite smoothly. Oops. Okay, bit of an issue there. Go back. I have found you can't go back very far in the with these machines because obviously it stuffs up what's happening with the stitches and how the stitches are created. So I may am I gonna end up with a bunch of tucked stitches or drop stitches? I honestly have no idea. I really don't know. This being stitch number one here, this is where the white needle is. So anything on the pegs after this should be black. So that's something for me to remember as I'm watching and picking up these stitches that have perhaps not formed properly. So far so good. It's looking all, whoops, looking all right, except for when the yarn comes out of the yarn holder, which is just because I'm not really holding the yarn in a, in a good spot and it's not coming through the tensioner. As I said, I'm not using the tensioner because I'm worried it will shred all the velvet off the yarn. So I'm going to have a missed stitch here, tucked or missed, I'm not sure which. But let's fix this one up. When I initially used the velvet yarn, it went through the machine really quite well. It wasn't, uh, there was not particularly any issues with that. So I think I need to... Mm -hmm. That one's alright, okay. This one's not alright though. Where's that black yarn gone? Again, I may be doing this back to front and ooh, I'm glad that happened because I've just noticed I have a bit of a problem here. I can see my finger through there and I should not be able to see my finger through there so that means there's a drop stitch there. So maybe that previous black one that I fixed, I did not fix correctly. Glad I noticed that at this point and not later on. The 
do wonder whether having some weights might help because this yarn is not very heavy or thick so maybe some weights on the end would um, help put some tension on this and help to stop stitches from dropping off like I think this stitch over here just dropped off so let's get you around the front there Right, so I've gone around once that was the white needle again just there so hopefully now I can just keep going through let's see still going fairly slowly because I just want to make sure those stitches are forming nicely I must say the yarn is coming out of the ball quite nicely so having rewound it into a center pull cake does seem to improve the way that the yarn is coming out of the ball and therefore feeding into the machine all right this seems to be going okay when we get around to the row again I'm just going to stop and just check uh, see problem can you see that all those stitches have not formed properly just check around the rest of the Oh, and I've got a problem over this side too. Bit of a problem there. All right, so I haven't done such a great job of picking up those stitches. So I just need to fix that and then we'll get going again. So I spent quite a lot of time trying to fix up the drop stitches and did manage to fix some of them. But you can see by the... Maybe you can see the stitch markers here and here and there is a whole big section here that I had tried to fix twice and it still wasn't right so I just decided to go ahead. And I'm pretty sure I did 68 rows with the first colour, with the multicolour of the velvet and have now done 68 rows again with the black. I'm I'm not 100% sure it was 68 rows, so I'm just going to pull this out a little bit and see if I can, somewhere where there's no drop stitches, just give this a pull and see how we're going. So if I were to fold that there, I think it might be about right. I might do a couple more rows. I might go until I have finished with this black. If it's slightly uneven, it's not really that big a deal. So here's pin number one, needle number one, just over here. So I've only got this much left, not enough for another round. So I am going to end here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I will do one row of this yellow. I'm not going to tie that because this yellow is eventually going to come out. And actually this is not enough of this black. Uh, because usually you need to make sure you can go all the way around the machine and that doesn't fit all the way around the machine so I do have uh, a little bit more of this black yarn left so that's okay I won't worry about that at the moment it's just for cinching and finishing off because it's for cinching I really don't need the hole around because I'm not going to close it flat I'm actually going to cinch it it doesn't matter that there's not that much yarn there. So I'm just going to go around once with this yellow high con contrasting colour as a waste yarn. Here I am back at the beginning. I'll just put that waste yarn in the middle. 